And like you go from a job that pays the bills at least to mm -hmm. something that you're new and, you know, new, new in business and not knowing if you're actually going to succeed in that or not. Mm -hmm. But I still did it anyways. And uh, the first month of my business, well, like being full time in business, I think I tripled my income. I absolutely love a good entrepreneurial success story. And today's special guest, Phil's Lawn Care, is going to share the story of how he quit his job at Ace Hardware. He didn't even get the boat close to the dock. He just straight up quit and launched out into starting his lawn care business, Phil's Lawn Care. He went full time in that. And not only did he experience success in Phil's Lawn Care, but he also started a YouTube channel that's absolutely blowing up. If you need inspired and encouraged by an entrepreneurial success story, take a listen to my boy Phil's Lawn Care share his story and the lessons he's learned along the way as he's built his YouTube channel and his business, Phil's Lawn Care. What's going on, guys? We got Phil's Lawn Care on today's YouTube podcast. It's the Green Industry Podcast. What's up, Phil? How you doing, Paul? Good, man. I'm excited to hear your story. I know you've been popping up on my YouTube news feed, and uh, you had DM me on Instagram you know, several times. So tell us who Phil's Lawn Care is out there in Idaho. Well, my name is Phil. I've been in business for almost four years now. Started out just like anybody else. I mean, well probably majority of lawn care guys, I started out working a nine to five dead end job that wasn't paying the bills. I mean, it was paying the bills, but it was just, I mean, it, we were living check to check. And so, uh, I knew I had to get out of this job because, or do something else and provide uh, to cover all of my expenses and, you know, have a livable income. You say, and so we, who's we, my wife and I, Okay. Yeah. We got no kids. And so, well, we got pets, you know, <laughs> so, right. but, uh, we got, we need to take care of, you know, everybody. I, I need to take care of everybody. And so I was working a nine to five and I wasn't making enough. And I actually worked at Ace Hardware as a small engine mechanic. Okay. And, uh, just that's why your old YouTube videos are like mechanic based. Yeah. So all of my okay. other, my, all of my old videos were, uh, me fixing machines. Yeah. That was it. So, no. Okay. Uh, the good thing about that is I never have to take my machines to any, you know, small engine shop because I do my own repairs and maintenance on lawn care equipment. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, but I started out, uh, knew I had to get out of it and I didn't know what I was going to do. I actually finished college with a auto body collision refinishing, uh, degree. And I thought I wanted to be a painter, like a car painter. Uh -huh. And so I went and worked at a body shop for about a month and quickly figured out that, you know, it wasn't right for me. It, you know, with all the health concerns and reasons of, of being in this industry for over 40 years as a car and body guy, mm -hmm. uh, you run into a lot of health problems later down the road, uh, in your you know thirties, forties, fifties, especially if you don't wear like a respirator. Mm -hmm. So I got out of that real quick, uh, went and worked at the, uh, as a small engine mechanic at the ACE hardware. And, uh, well, that's how I ended up with that nine to five. And, uh, started to venture out seeing what I wanted to do. Cause I knew I couldn't stay there for long. It wasn't, you know, again, making the cutting, uh, uh, give, giving me that enough income. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, uh, we were a steel dealer then. And so I had a lot of landscaper and commercial guys coming in and I was kind of, you know, I made some friends here and there with some other lawn care guys. And they've been telling me, man, you just need to quit. You know, you just need to, you know, come work for us. And I'm like, well, I don't really want to work for somebody else. Even if they pay me a few bucks extra, mm -hmm. I want to actually be the owner, you know, and I had like this entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mind. Is that how you say it? <laughs> entrepreneurial yeah. spirit. Yeah. 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 And so uh, my wife and I got talking, I'm like, wife, I need to literally quit. I mean, I need to go and open up, you know, start a lawn care business. You know, everyone has been starting lawn care businesses left and right in Spokane, where I used to live in Washington. And she's like, well, I'm all on board, do it, you know, uh, as long as you do it right. And we did a lot of praying and, uh, I felt like God was telling me, you know, this year you're going to quit. And this was back in 2000, 2019 is when I quit mm -hmm. 2018. I started the business as a part-time job. So I was working my nine to five and after five, I went in mode. I think I had around 10 accounts by the end of 2018. And so by 2019, I hit uh, April and May 
I hit the marketing hard. So I went and did Craigslist ads, you know, like anyone that would start. I did Craigslist. <laughs> I did, you know, next door. You, you weren't listening to the Green Industry podcast, were you? Oh, I didn't know what that was, man. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're you know who I listened to, though? I listened to Keith Kalfas. Shout out to that guy, man. That, yeah. that guy, I listened to all of his episodes and I'm like, man, this guy, like, I could relate to him. You know, he worked a dead end job. He was getting evic eviction notices and all that. And I'm like, I'm kind of in that position. I need to get out and quit and just start. So uh -huh. uh, I told my boss, I'm like, uh, I put in my two weeks and it was the scariest thing in the world because I was going from, you know, mowing 10 lawns and uh, kind of pulling the trigger on something that I didn't understand that if I was going to succeed in. Mm -hmm. And like you go from a job that pays the bills at least to mm -hmm. something that you're new and, you know, new, new in business and not knowing if you're actually going to succeed in that or not. Mm -hmm. But I still did it anyways. And, uh, the first month of my business, well, like being full-time in business, I think I tripled my income. Oh, wow. So it was just a complete blessing. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Lord's hand was upon me and I felt it all the way through. And, and, and he led me to like, I think I had, I ended that year with about 30, 35 accounts. Wow. That was weekly, bi-weekly side jobs, you know, mulch installation. So, uh, pulled through that whole year of 2019 and ever since have been doing this full time. So, but I'm that's still solo, great. man. Still solo. Hey, that's, we've had on the program a couple, well, recently Jarvis, I don't know if you caught that episode. We uh, interviewed yeah. a guy from Mississippi named Jarvis. Yeah. I listened to, uh, I've been binge, binge listening to all of your episodes. So I went from the old ones and now they're like the new ones. And old ones are rough, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't <laughs> like just skip to the start, starting like the 500. Those first four uh, 500 are a little rough, but we're, we're finding our stride now. Mr. Yeah. I went, I went on like, Spotify and I'm like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I'm like, man, how many episodes does this guy have? So, but yeah, it was like yeah. 700 something. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. This would take years to listen to all of them. I don't know. Yeah. Well, Jarvis, he shared a really cool story though. Cause he, he's got, I believe he has children, but his wife, um, he was neglecting his family working mm -hmm. so much. And so he's just solo. He calls it a, a solopreneur, but he's yeah. very passionate about being solo. Mm -hmm. And, um, then I interviewed a guy on, uh, recently Andrew Martinez. And he said that, you know, he, well, he's solo for a season cause he used to have employees and a lot of stress there. So, um, He's he's rock and solo right now, and, and I know my friend Jason Creole, he's solo, and and Johnny Mo solo, and so it's why, okay. Why, why do you think people? A lot of people are going solo. That's the question I had in mind when I was listening to all these podcast episodes. Like, yeah. why are guys that have employees going solo, choosing that solo route? Yeah, Is it it's, it's stressful. It's, or yeah, what? absolutely. It's it's the um it's the lifestyle. It's you you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about. When you're teeter totter, you know, 70, 80 accounts or whatever it is, it could be landscape based project. And then somebody doesn't show up in the morning or you get the lame excuse. I saw my boy, um, Dan Wheeler from the fence industry podcast post today. The guys, it was a guy's first day of work and he didn't even show up Come the, the on. employee. And so when you get enough of those scars and, and, and experiences, yeah. The guys that are Jarvis and, and Andrew and, and, and Jason Creole and um, Johnny Moe, and, and so, so I don't want to put words in their mouth, mm -hmm. but they're like, you know what? I'm comfortable, you know, paying myself, you know, $80,000 a year and, and or whatever it is. And they got the, that's not the top line revenue of the business. That's just what they can pay themselves and yeah. still, um, you know, reinvest in the business, pay all their taxes, pay all their overhead and, and still have money left over, maybe take whatever it is. Like, you know what? I'm fine with that. I, I don't need to make 200,000 or, or $250,000 and have 17 employees. And, and yeah, you could, when you scale a business, you can make a ton more money. Of course, oh, yeah. Yeah. that's the upside, but the downside in, in many cases is there's extra responsibility and there's more people. And, I tell you what, I, people have um, <laughs> intricacies, man. They people have quirks. People are irresponsible. There's, there's no perfect person other than Jesus. He he was perfect, yeah. but even right. he had. Uh, Th Thomas was doubting him. Peter's cussing people out. Judas is stealing money. I mean, he he didn't mm -hmm. have it easy. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And uh, so I think it's like, hey, you know what? 
I don't mind waking up. If I sleep in, no big deal. If I, if I want to go to the gym in the morning, I go to the gym. I go and I work. I bang out my work. I come home. It's, it's the lifestyle thing. So I, I think it's yeah. for some people solo is what's best uh, for other people. Scaling a business is what's best. If I were to start all over today and, and start a new business, I think I'd spend at least my first year being solo um, just because of, of the life, the, the lack of stress. Um, yeah. So. I've been solo for three years now coming on four and I love it. I mean, I would, yeah, there's em, employees are nice. You know, I've, I've had helpers before that helped me you know, throughout my busy times, especially when it rains, you know, I need to like call my brother or something. Hey, come help me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's nice to have employees, but it's, you know, you got to pay them, you know, you got to be responsible if they get you know injured or something happens. That's all, you know, that's all understandable, but solo, solo lifestyle, I agree with, you know, it's, it's awesome, you know, and I'm not, I, that's just my personal decision that I've made. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have, you know, I mow Tuesday through Friday, and I leave Monday for YouTube. So that's when I oh, go okay. and look for a, you, you know, a lawn that's overgrown. And I'm constantly looking throughout the days when I mow too. And so I only spend one day to make, to, to shoot and create and edit a video all in one day. Now, the rest is all. Wednesday. And I thought I saw that camera in the background when I was DMing you. What's yeah. That? So that was, that was an overgrown property that is now a weekly property. Oh. So I'm like, you know, I, I was, I was on the, I was on the edge of, should I just mow it real quick without a camera? Because it does take longer when you have a camera set up and you got to get all the angles and, and do it for how the, long does it take with all these angles? Cause I watch your videos and I can see, Oh, you just moved the oh. camera. I'm like, well, is some, do you have a cameraman sit there moving it? Or are you manually all me. moving it? It's That's all me. Like it takes a long time to keep yeah. moving it around. It's all me. I just, the way I edit, it seems like it's all streamlined. Like someone is literally taking a camera, moving it back, you know? Yeah. I thought you had like a camera crew out there. Cause I, <laughs> I, I'm a creator and I'm like, oh man, that, that's stressing me out. Just watching it. No. Yeah. No, it's all me. I'm like, I, I physically mow, stop, get off, <laughs> pause the video, move it, turn on a new clip, go back on my machine and mow. Wow. And then when I go and edit, I edit all of the, you know, movement out. So it's yeah. all just like me mowing. So. Yeah. Cause I think I heard they say like every eight seconds, you need to keep people's attention. Like if, if it's the mm -hmm. same scene for a longer than eight seconds, cause of the TikTok, you know, Instagram real generation we're in, we get bored. Yeah. It's gotta, you so, can't you do a good job of keeping the scenes moving. So people aren't bored. Yeah. I have my techniques. I mean, there's one technique where it's called a pan and zoom. I don't know if you've, if you know what that means, but you take a video and let's just say uh, the camera randomly right now starts zooming into my face just slowly, you know, and that that uh, I feel like retains the viewer's attention. Mm -hmm. So let's just say you're mowing a trim like a line, like a fence line mm -hmm. and you have like the camera that's way back there and all you're doing is trimming the fence line. I mean, no one's going to watch you just trim in the fence line. You got to have some action. You got to have some movement. So mm -hmm. the camera has to move while you trim you know and so that'll that'll keep people's attention now are you doing that in post editing or are you doing that while you're post oh, post yeah post. well because i can't do it while i while i trim yeah. you know now what are you Just, using adobe premiere pro or Final no Premier? i use uh i use power director pro it's just to it's a i actually this is where's my phone so my business phone this is what i use to shoot and edit Oh wow! IPhone. Is yeah. that an iPhone 13 Pro Max or no? <laughs> no, this is a Galaxy S10 Plus. Oh okay. Yeah, I'm not an iPhone guy. <laughs> All right. And then you but, film it. You film it like uh, this way. Yeah, landscape mode. Landscape. Mode. No, dude, this does not work, man. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's when you got the black bars on the side. Yeah, this is if you want to like shoot shorts and all that. Yeah. How, how do you do? Do you ever do shorts or reels or TikToks? No. 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 Uh. No, I, I think I made an account on TikTok just to kind of own it. I didn't want anyone else. Oh, to take yeah. I think, honestly, I was listening to one of your episodes today that came out. It was about like marketing and mm -hmm. with, with who is it? James Vansky. Yeah. And he, and he said something about that. You know, you got to get on all the social medias and put your name on it. So you claim it as yours. And so yeah. that well, was he was emphasizing and this this is a mistake that you obviously we're proactive not to make, but a lot of guys make is their Instagram handle on one will be, you know, Fred's lawn care. 
you know, mm-hmm. and then and like on, on, on YouTube, Fred's lawn care. And then you go over to Facebook and it's Fred and it's his name. And then you go over to TikTok and it's like Fred eight, two, one, four, five, you know, yeah. it's like, well, pick, like pick your brand. What, what, what is it? Mm-hmm. It's Phil's lawn care. Okay. And so what James was emphasized. Okay. So you're Phil's lawn care on YouTube. You're Phil's lawn care on IG. You're Phil's lawn care on TikTok. You're Phil's lawn care on Facebook. You're Phil's lawn care on your vehicle. Uh, you're Phil's lawn care on everything on everywhere. Yep. And um, that's a great point. Cause, cause I think we've all seen where it's like, Oh, I, I didn't even know that was you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's the only reason I made it. I mean, I think I okay. maybe have put something on there just to, but I, I don't, I all spend right. majority of my time is on YouTube. Okay. Um, and what's, what's the reason for that? Well, it's hard to delegate time for all these other social media platforms, like even Instagram, I have it. But the only reason I, I mean, I post like some behind the scenes photos and cool photos of my equipment and trailer and setups. But the only reason I really have it is for messaging. So, I mean, I message you, I message other people, Kevin, I message Brian and uh, I use it for messaging. Brian for communication. No, uh, uh, Brian, top notch. Oh, Brian, top notch. Yeah. And then uh, Kevin Hansen. Kevin Hansen, yeah. I talked to Al a few times. And so we just go back and forth. Yeah, we go back and forth. And, and didn't you do a YouTube uh, with Spencer and, and Juggernaut or something like that? I did a live giveaway. I think I was giving away like a Dar- Darwin's Grip handle. Okay. And uh, I think that was for, uh, I think it was like a 25,000 sub giveaway or something. But Oh, wow. We gave one of those away. Yeah, and we had Kevin on it and we also had Al on so. Oh yeah, Alan, nice. Kevin. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, I, one of those guys was telling me that story, and uh, that yeah, that was pretty cool. Darwin Grip is that Corey Ballard's thing? No, he just sells them. Oh okay. Yeah. Darwin's them. Grip. You ever used it? Actually, honestly, Paul, you need a Darwin's Grip on that Toro, on okay. that weed eater. Well, that Toro, I've seen I you it in the crick. That what are you? Six, are you six three, six four? Uh six two and a half. Okay, so you're about my height. Trust me, Paul. Trust me, get a Darwin's grip, install it. And if you're going to be using that trimmer long-term, you're back. I mean, in your videos, you're like arched, right? Oh, yeah. Big so time. you, when you get that Wait, Darwin's You watch grip, one of my videos? Dude, yeah, man. Oh, really? That's yeah, cool. I watch your videos. I watch some of your makeover videos. You I, and... Uh, Jason uh, Creole. Yeah, yeah, Jason, yeah. Uh, I dropped... He, he planted a snake in the creek. And, and I, <laughs> yeah, I, saw that. I screamed like a schoolgirl, man. I was so scared. And he picked it up and he threw it at me and it hit my cheek. And I thought it was a real snake. And I'm, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm screaming. So so uh, Toro, they sent me that weed eater for free. I was all pumped yeah. up. They sent me the whole lineup. And I dropped it in the creek and I started running and I forgot about it. And Jason <laughs> in La La Land, he thought this was so funny. So he didn't even notice it. And we get done like realizing, uh, you know, the adrenaline wore off or whatever it. I'm like, dude, my weed eater's just been hanging out in the creek, and then it won't, it doesn't work. So I'm like, oh man, I'm supposed to make a review video for Toro too. I'm yes. like, oh man, what do I do? So I, I, broken. Actually, I actually emailed him and I sent him the link, and I'm like, hey, what are we gonna do here? You sent me this to review. I dropped it in the creek. I don't know what you want me to do. Oh man, so you're probably gonna have to send it back. They're gonna f- send you a different one. Probably I don't know. Never... Maybe if they sent me a new battery. I think it's just the battery. I think I killed the battery being in the oh, water. Okay. I don't know though. But anyway, it's like you know, they, they, these brands. You know, I got a big shot with Toro. You know, impress them, and I dropped the <laughs> thing in the creek, and I know you get the video for. Him. So I, that's why I joked. I was like, Al Blades, oh, man, he makes man. this it look so easy. Oh, it ain't easy, man. No, I know. I that's why about- our videos are sped up too, because it takes us forever. I mean, my, my videos are all times two speed. Wow. So other than like the walkthroughs that I do, but me, like the action, it's either 2X or 4X sped Ooh. up. Yeah. And the videos are like 30, 40 minutes. I mean, I'm I'm out here, you know, doing these sidewalk edges for, or these sidewalks. It takes me six hours, you know, each. And so. Uh, just yeah, how, how long would it take you if you weren't filming? If, if that was just, you're just. Oh, if I wasn't filming. Uh, yeah. Um probably half i mean like three hours yeah on each side each side took me six hours yeah so i mean some of them hours if i'm really focused and i'm not it's not on video i mean you obviously work faster i get some people i get people all the time that are asking me like what's up with your technique 
you know, why don't you just edge the whole thing? Why are you stopping? I'm like, it's for the video. <laughs> so it's uh, like, you know, it's for entertainment. Camera, for entertainment. Camera. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, I'm not going to go and post, put the tripod and the camera in a corner of the lawn and just do my work. You know, no one will see what I'm doing. So it's got to be up close, you know, and you got to constantly move the tripod, move the camera, stop the video. So it's a, it's a long process. Yeah. I couldn't imagine that. I, I, I've, uh, so I've been doing some of these videos with Jason, but we like, I'm filming him and then he's filming me and we're, we're kind of mm -hmm. tag teaming. So it's not moving tripod. You know, that would just be tedious to move the tripod to move it. So that's why I like, I feel him. I told him, I was like, Jason, you're a ball hog. Like in basketball, I was like, yeah, you do everything. I'm sitting here. Camel, like, let me do something, man. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do that. And I'm like, Oh, let me, let me do something, man. Let yeah. There, care. there was one video, uh, your recent one where you helped that lady out. Mm -hmm. Uh, you had a really nice camera. I mean, it like blurred out the back. What was that? So that's cinema mode on the iPhone 13. Man, uh, I th iPhone 13 Pro. Let me see if I can show you. Um, I, I might, I might look into getting it. Yeah. IPhone okay. Days. So, so, um, I don't know if it's gonna. Oh yeah, your green screen. It's gonna go right through my green. First screen. time I seen that, I thought that was your house, man. I was back. Hey, don't tell nobody. <laughs> that's why <laughs> Al Blades thinks that's my piano <laughs> back there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Al, oh, poor Al, man. <laughs> He's like, will you go play your p? We go play that piano. I was like, oh man, play some Mozart. Oh man, I, I said, I said, Al, they're actually coming to tune it. I said, hey, 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 hey. It, uh, they need to tune it first. So once they tune it, I'll play it. For you. Oh, so on the iPhone 13 Pro, and I didn't even know this, but that woman that's in the in that video, she's actually a professional photographer, mm -hmm. and uh, so she takes headshots and um like my actual headshot that's on the green industry podcast uh logo thing or um uh, what do they call that cover art for the podcast yep. she took that picture that's how i met her mm -hmm. and she's like so she was showing me on the iphone 13 pro they have a feature called cinema mode cinematic mode and so i've shot that whole thing on this on the cinematic mode and it, it will that's highlight really yeah, that's really I impressive would, i would highly 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 recommend the iphone 13 pro I've been thinking um, about. It. I need. I need to upgrade. See, the thing is, like, I don't have any GoPros. I don't have no other camera except this, and I'm not planning on getting any GoPros because there's really no point. You know, I mean, I know Kevin's got man, twelve, fifteen GoPros, and uh, you know that's all fine. I mean, I, I I really just need my phone, and the only problem is uh, this this phone doesn't have a lot of memory, oh, man. so I'm limited on what I can store on here. And what i can edit so i have to i literally have to shoot edit save the video and then upload it and then delete it from the phone after it's been uploaded to kind of clear out my memory you know yeah so. iphone 13 pro max and then i got um one t it's terabyte well, whatever oh, one, one terabyte t. wow yeah, yeah i got i got because you can get you can get like 64 gigabytes 256 or one t mm -hmm. and i said give me that one t so lo load it up. So yeah, you iPhone Pro, thir iPhone 13 Pro Max is awesome. So yeah, I'll have to look into it. Yeah, I'd highly recommend that. Um, Jason uses a Sony um, camera, Sony something seven. My my neighbor's got 20 million TikTok followers. He's got four million Instagram followers, and <sighs> um, he, he he uses like an eight thousand dollar camera. Though I was asking him what he uses yeah i try to just streamline it it's hard you know that's why i don't use gopros because then you got to connect it to you know you got to take the memory card out, you got to stick it in your computer you got to transfer all the files that just takes up time i just yeah. shoot it with this it's all uploaded i just you know so you do that on mondays and yep. then uh tuesday you're back at it tuesday wednesday thursday friday you're you're at um yeah just almost almost here. 60 a week yep and on then what do you do basis. on saturdays and sundays Saturdays run business errands, uh, try to spend a lot of time with the wife, go grocery shopping, Sundays, church service. And this is my day off. I, I give it, you know, I try to relax, just try to keep my mind afresh uh, mm -hmm. for what's coming for next week. So I prepare for that. But Mondays is also, uh, or I try to tune my equipment up Saturday as well, mm -hmm. just so that, you know, it's all ready. I mean, I don't know. 
I know a lot of guys that, you know, don't like to take care of their equipment, you know, at least, you know, I, I know guys that never tune their equipment, man. They blow the machines up, but uh, I tune my equipment every week. I check the oil, you know, blow out the air filters, pressure what wash them. Oh, cool. What gas do you got? You use 89, 93. What gas? Oh, no way, dude. I use ethanol use free. Ethanol free. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, we have, we are very, I'm very blessed to have it in our uh, city. Cause I know I've talked to so many small, other small, when I used to do small engine work, I mm-hmm. uh, talked to a lot of mechanics and they're like, we don't even have ethanol free, you know? And so I would always be like, well, you know, use seafoam or something like that. Use a stabilizer to mm-hmm. stabilize your fuel. Because if you leave the gas sitting in there for too long, you know, your equipment won't start. So even wow. if you leave it in for like a month, you know, your equipment won't start. So wow. you got to be careful. You know, that ethanol gums up and then it gums up the carbs, gums up your your fuel lines, and then your machines won't start. And then you're sitting there pulling for wondering why your, your machines take 30 pulls to start in the mornings. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Because of your fuel. So what's been your um most uh memorable moment filming Phil's lawn care on YouTube? <laughs> Probably the recent one. My very first time I got recognized. I was just blown away. And this was this was my recent video that I did. I was shooting the video, right? And uh the gar- the the trash can was full so i'm like all right you know i paused the video I'm like i'm gonna go empty the trash because no, no one wants to see how you empty the trash into your truck and so i do that as i'm walking back a car pulls up and stops i'm like what is this you know am i get about to get shot in this neighborhood or something you know but yeah late, it was like an old lady she rolls down the window she's like i just seen your video today on youtube you're doing an amazing job i'm like thank you you know <laughs> this is the I first I didn't know what to say, but then I'm just like, thank you, you know. And it was just, it was just like, I don't know, man. This is my first time ever being recognized off camera, and uh, it was just a blessing and a joy, and that that someone actually recognized my work, you know. Feels awesome, so, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels it feels great, you know. But again, that's not. It was just weird. It was a weird feeling because I I never ever imagined anyone coming up you know saying hi to me and saying yeah i've seen your videos you know no one has ever done that so That's but that cool. was a very memorable i think i'll remember that for the rest of my life because it was a first mm-hmm. uh but another memorable moment was when one of my one of my videos where i just started doing the edging mm-hmm. it reached ten thousand views mm-hmm. and i was just like blown away i'm like what you know ten thousand views that's insane you know and uh that was like that was a driver that was a driver for me. I'm like, I need to do more of these. You know, this was, this is. Yeah. That's really interesting. You said that. Cause when I interviewed Al Boyd, did you listen to that interview I did with yeah. Al? Yeah. I both of saw, them. Yeah. yeah. I think I saw you in the comments or I saw you somewhere pop up. So I figured you watched it, but, um, he said the same thing. Cause he had put out a rap, a rap song called, um, every day, cut it up. Cut it up. Yeah. yeah. Cut it up. Sorry. It's, it's late here in, in um, Atlanta. I'm, Excellence in broadcasting stopped about two hours ago, Phil. <laughs> we're on different time zones, guys. If I'm a little off, Mr. Producer always listens. He's like, man, you were off game last night. And I was like, oh, yeah, I recorded that one at night. No worries, Paul. <laughs> it's all right. I, I like to wake up in the morning, get a shower. I drink a Celsius. I'm all jacked up. You That's know, right. it's going to be about 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 a.m. And then then it's that's over. <laughs> the evening, it's over. So I I uh, was, well, where was I? Al Blade's 10,000. So he writes the song, Cut It Up posted on youtube he's he's dming me he, I, I give him a hard time but he's like man can you give me a shout out please you know share my video can mr producer you know he's, he's hustling i love it and i shared it man Al better for not forget me when he's famous man i, I <laughs> yeah 150 subscribers man yeah and uh he was this this character the grass master he had fake hair and all yeah stuff. i remember the wig yeah wig he hit ten thousand views on that video and he thought that was like you know, viral and he was yeah. all fired up, but that was the numbers, 10,000 views, which is interesting now. Cause he gets, you know, six, he's had 60 million views in a year, <laughs> but it was that 10,000 milestone that it was like, wow. Yeah. 10,000 people watched me mow or, or edge or like do something like that we do every day. And we don't, you know, we just subconsciously like don't even realize what we're doing. Yeah. I think that's, that's one thing that I'll probably never forget is that milestone, you know, that 10,000 view on that, on that one video. And I'm like, I got to do this again. You know, this is fun. You know, I'll see the numbers jump and I want to do it again. So I posted a second video It and it did like 50,000 views. I'm like, what's going on? You know? And so 
the subscribers started growing. I'm like, man, this is, this is awesome. You know, I'm on the right path. Let's do it again. So it was almost like a, I had like an adrenaline rush of doing it more and more, you know, I wanted more of it. I wanted, I wanted to see how, you know, where this could take me. And eventually, and these were all jobs that, you know, some of them were, I think this first one was free. I just asked one of my customers, I'm like, Hey, you know, uh, your edges, I think we were just mowing for her or something. And I'm like, Hey, your edges are a little rough. Can I shoot a video for like this edging makeover, like do an edging makeover video for our channel? And she's like, sure, go ahead. What's it going to cost? I'm like, free. Don't worry about it. You know, we're just going to, as long as you give us permission to film, she's like, go after it. So we did it. And it wasn't even that bad. You know, it's nothing compared to what I do now. (laughs) So, uh, but we did that. And then the second video was a customer of mine. He forgot to call me on this property Mm -hmm. that uh, he realized it was overgrown. I'm like, hey, can I shoot a video on it? And, you know, we bid the job too. So we got paid on top of that. Nice. And uh, we nice. did the job and I filmed it and we uploaded on YouTube and now it's got over like 800,000 views. So Wow. Yeah, Jason, someone wanted to pay us 100 bucks and Jason's like, nah, we just do it for free. I'm like, Jason, what kind of business is this, man? I don't yeah, well, now- you take 50 <laughs> more, man. And I take any like, opportunity I can. You know, I got... I'm oh, still in man. business, you know. We still take I'm, on I'm clients. I'm a for-profit in, individual, man. And, uh, <laughs> and Jason's like, "Oh yeah, that lady wanted to give us a hundred dollars," and I was like, "Well, did you get the hundred bucks?" He's like, "No, man, we're doing it for free." It's like <laughs> free in the in the title or whatever. I'm like, oh man, I'll take fifty bucks is fifty bucks, man. I think, but yeah, but I think honesty is key, and that. Oh, that's that, what it he is. Said, you know. Yeah, it, when I say it's free, trust me, guys, it's free. Yeah, same right? here, same here. But, um, like, if people ask me, I'm like. People ask me all the time, is this paid? How much do they pay? I'm like, this one was free. No one paid me, you know? Yeah, no, I, yeah integrity is everything with it. But I, what I'm saying is I'm like, come on, Jason. So they offer you 100 bucks. Take 100 <laughs> bucks, man. So I've, I, I, I've done uh, the, a, the Ava's, Iva's her name, A-I-V-A, but the A's silent. I didn't know that. So I'm Dumb Bill Jr. out here. Hi, Iva. You know, <laughs> Ava. Hey. Just, like, just pretend the A's not there. It's Iva. It's like, oh. mm. But um, I, I really did do hers for free because um, I was like, if I can, can you give me permission to film? I'll do your yard for free. And, yeah. um, and she ended up being in the video a little bit, which helped too. I, I have an, uh, one out and then another, another one coming out on Paul Jamison lawn transformation. I get like a hundred or 200 views though. I, I don't know how you get 800,000 views. It's crazy. Uh, they just, I mean, I, I don't know either. I mean, my subscribers have, you know, been, I have a very loyal, uh, I guess following you should say, and is it the, the women thing I heard what? about what? Is a bunch of women watching you or what? What in my analytics? I have a lot of uh, older elderly people. Okay, so I mean, I I guess both genders. Um, but yeah, a lot of people. I guess in the comment section, you see a lot of old ladies. <laughs> I had a uh, old lady call me and left me a voicemail. Cause my, on my sweatshirts, you could see my number. Oh, so people wow. call me all the time. They're like, I seen your videos. You're amazing, but you need to get some good work boots. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and, uh, but people call me all the time and I'm like, I usually don't answer out of state numbers now. I need anyways. Yeah. So people leave me voicemails if they like to, but, uh, yeah, I guess that's one thing, you know, when you, when you put your number out there for the public to see, you get it, calls, texts, all that. So. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, but how many how many subscribers do you have? Uh, close to fifty seven thousand. So my goal is to hit a hundred thousand by the end of this year. Yeah, which should, is uh, do that. That's on my vision board, boy. I got that silver play. I'm at yeah. I'm, I'm at five you got two. Oh, you got a vision board? I just have a whiteboard that says sub goal hundred k. Hit it. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Kind of motivate me, keep me going. You know, I I printed out the silver play, and I I got that. <laughs> you got it. Do you got it in a frame? <laughs> I don't have it in a frame, but it's on my vision board. I laminated it. I went to uh, Office Max. I got I, I printed it out on their color printer and mm-hmm. laminated it, and uh, it's up there, ironically, next to Toro because I want to have a sponsorship with Toro. And here I am dropping their come on Paul. in the creek. Come on, Paul. But uh, hey. Yeah, that's why I live my video. I'm out there with a Ryobi, man. <laughs> I gotta, <laughs> that thing sucked too. Get the like, backup. Little get 40, the backup 40 volt Ryobi. I'm like, what is this, man? I'm pushing this thing. 
Hey, you never know. Ryobi could sponsor you. <laughs> oh, agree. Yeah, agree to the street podcast brought to you by Ryobi. Um, <laughs> but, you know, what, what I do as sponsors was like, I literally use X Mark and Toro, like for yeah. 11 years. Like, yep. I love X Mark. I love Toro. So, for me, that's why I have Toro. I mean, I don't mind. I can tell you what's on my vision board, mm-hmm. but. I want to have Toro in there because I I believe in their product. I use their product. I want to have X Mark um, because I believe in their product. I use their product. You know what I mean? And and um, so anyway, it's it's just like um, on my vision board is the brands that are like my dream brands. Like man, I really want to work with these brands. You know what I mean? Yeah, I've been, I've been using the Hustler for like three years, uh-huh. and uh, I've reached out to Hustler many times, and they they have responded, but they're kind of pushing me back. And they, anyways, long story short, uh, they haven't responded to me. So, um, I'm not really looking forward to purchasing any more hustlers, you know, but I still use the hustler for my business and I own the equipment, but I recently bought a X mark stars 36 and Mm. I love it. I mean, it's like perfect machine for my backyards, the properties that I service. It's perfect. Yeah. So, um, are you going to go to the equip expo this year, Phil? Oh man, I really want to. I I know promises ball, but I will probably end up getting tickets. You know, I think they're like ten dollars right now. If you use promo code Paul, okay, well, um, I'll use that tickets, promo code. Tickets are twenty bucks for early bird. Then they go up, but okay. um, for a limited time they're only twenty bucks. But then when you get your ticket, if you use the promo code Paul, you'll get in for only ten bucks. Oh, but the reason he- I I mentioned that other than you'll get spotted like. I remember the juggernaut, man. He, he was depressed when he left Equip. I was talking to him. He's like, man, like my head's going down now because this is everywhere you walk. So, oh, you like your juggernaut. Yeah, you like your juggernaut. Really overwhelming. It's, yeah. it's, it's awesome. Yeah. But um, you'll get that if you go there. But that's not why I mentioned going there because um, you can talk to the – a lot of the companies bring their marketing teams to, to the mm-hmm. trade show. And so the actual decision makers – and I'm not too familiar with Hustler. Um, like I don't know names or – whatever like uh you sure. know with yeah. echo and toro and 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 uh companies like that that i've you know put more work into to hustle network hustler no mm-hmm. pun intended <laughs> hey, marty it's not all bad this late <laughs> um he's long in sleep by now man he's, he goes to bed early i go to bed early we're like texting you know six in the morning we've already do you know 5 30 5 45 if he sees me up on instagram or i'm up on instagram you know call me text me 6 30 in the morning hey did you see this you know and, <laughs> But um, if I was Phil's lawn care, I would go to Equip and I would like Hustler, whoever the brands are, whatever is your flavor out there. I know you you mm-hmm. mentioned um, I'm an Echo guy, but I know you mentioned another company earlier. Um, so you go to their booth and you just introduce yourself and you say, hey, I'm Phil's lawn care. I have 100,000 YouTube subscribers or whatever. Um, I love your brand. Is there any campaign you're working on or any way I can you know help you? Um, because if you think about it, these brands, if they're going to do their own content, they got to, they pay like, cause their videos are really good. They pay a videographer company, you know, that yeah. comes out with all the cameras and they make the video, which is a ton of money. And then they have to pay Instagram and Facebook or you, wherever YouTube, TikTok, they have to pay those platforms to run the sponsored ad. So they're mm-hmm. spending money on the video to be created and then they're spending money on facebook instagram whatever to to run the video so it actually would make more sense to pay phil's lawn care and you make the video you put their piece of equipment in your video and you know you get paid it's a win-win but the the tough part is you have to meet the right people at these brands and then you have to get them at the right time because they have campaigns they do for budgets at like certain times or whatever you got to hit that at the right time. So don't give up. But but at Equip, then you can actually meet the people and get their business cards. You know what I mean? And I just walk yeah. around and I'm like, hey, I'm Paul, the you know, most listened to podcast in the industry, blah, blah, blah. And and and, and people maybe, recognize you. Well, most well, the listeners recognize me, but yeah. the brands, they don't know. And they're like, oh. oh, nice to meet you. And then they ghost me. But oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm I mean, it's 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 entrepreneurship, man. We we can't just sit sit back and 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 let our inbox fill up with all these you know, great brand deals. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. I oh. get so many Chinese oh, companies man. asking me like, Hey, can you review this pressure washer? Hey, can you review it? I'm like, I got no. that same email, man. I the thing is, email. the thing is, Paul, uh, my, like my content 
differs from like a lot of YouTube guys that do like product reviews. I don't do product reviews, you know, none of my videos are product reviews. And so how I have to approach is completely different from, uh, just for example, Brian Fullerton, you know, he does an actual product in-depth review and he talks about the equipment. If I ever did one of those videos, oh, those get 5,000 views and they people would. would dislike it. And people are like, what are you doing, man? Go, go mow a crazy. Yeah. Go mow a crazy lawn. Like this yeah, is that, not you. Yeah. And so our, 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 um, content, uh, the benefit that it would bring for these brands is just brand recognition. I mean, we get, yeah. you know, tons of views, tons of people watching, tons of people asking what kind of equipment we are using. And so we can post links and stuff. So a lot of people like when I approach sponsorship opportunities, I'm like, look, we're not doing a product review We're it's only going to be brand recognition for you. That's it. You know, yeah. well, so, I might run some ads on you, man. You could put some headphones <laughs> in and be like, Hey guys, I'm just listening to the green industry podcast while I work. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll plug we'll you talk, in. Yeah. We'll talk play. off here. Let me talk to Mr. Producer too, man. We'll, we'll see if we can get some ads running. I see the value in it, man. And, and, um, uh, the, the, some of these brands have big money. I was talking to my friend who's got the 20 million, um, TikTok followers. He got uh, mm-hmm. 4 million Instagram followers. Wow. Big deal. But he's like, yeah. dude, I'm, I'm like a celebrity. He's like, I'm like, I went beyond there's like micro influencer. Then there's like influencer. And then there's like, he's like the top of the town. Yeah. He's like, man, he's a cool guy. I just talk shop with them about all this stuff. And there's so, there's so much opportunity out there. Um, for sure. So mm-hmm. I, I respect your, um, what you're doing, man. I, I think it's great. Yeah. There's a lot to learn. I'm still learning every single day. You know, I'm learning how to edit better. I'm learning the SEO side. I'm studying my analytics, seeing, you know, how I can improve. And there's, there's so much, I mean, people don't realize it's not just, you know, you get your camera, you click record and you publish. There's well, the whole even that back end. There's a whole, yeah, even that's hard, I, man. I forget to hit record sometimes, man. <laughs> oh, I've done that a few times. You start edging and then you're like, did I ever hit record? And then you look and you just did the whole edge and you completely forgot. And you're like, oh. that's why in that video where Jason threw the snake at me uh, after that whole scene and, and I'm going crazy, I'm looking at his camera and there's no like flashing red button on the Sony. So I'm like, Jason, oh, yeah. if we miss that, if I just had a snake <laughs> hit my cheek and I thought it was real and I'm screaming like I was scared, man. I was like, we better got that footage. And, and we did. Yeah. But, um, Back to equip, I would go, dude, and, and I would network um, and, and talk to those brands that you want to work with that would make sense to place their product in your videos mm-hmm. and, um, you know, uh, hang out with your listeners, some people that, you know, are part of viewers that, that watch you. It's so much fun. I would highly recommend going. Yeah, I'd go just to meet people. You know, I'd love to meet yeah. Kevin. I'd love to meet all the other guys that are doing the same type of content, you know, and all the other you know, big lawn care YouTubers. I'd love to meet you, Paul. Shake your hand, man. I love listening to, I get so much golden nuggets from all your podcast episodes. So I really appreciate 